and I appreciate you being here. Uh, I thank you for that. I know you could be spending your evening any number of ways. This is gonna be one of our shorter events because we at this moment have 11 storytellers split into two rounds. They're gonna share a 99 second story. And after the first six go, that's assuming that we only have 11 and no one else comes. Every single person here, except for me and Mary, that includes the tellers. It's a little bit different than last time. Yes. Uh, you're gonna send to Mary and I'll remind you again you're going to send to Mary two names. You don't have to put first and second. Nope. Your top two people. Two names. Everybody gets to do that. Now, if I'm a storyteller, I'm definitely going to put my name as one of those names. But you don't have to. Up to you. If you really feel like, hey, these two people were simply better than me, okay. All right. So we're going to have two rounds. So right now it'll be six people. They'll all be randomly chosen from my hat from Peru. Yes, it sucks if you go first. I know. I know. But if you're good, you'll you'll go through, right? I'm ready. If you're really good. You're still gonna <laughs> I'm go. Ready, buddy. We'll remember. And what Mary will do, she has she is multitasking up the yin yang. Not only is she the vote counter, but after the stories and before you vote, she's gonna give a quick summary. All right. So hopefully that will help a little bit. And whatever you use as your scoring system is what you use as your scoring system. That's it. Does anybody, it doesn't have to be a teller, but this is mostly directed at them, have any questions? All right, so then I'll ask everyone to mute themselves just to ensure that our <clears throat> teller, who I will spotlight, doesn't get um, interrupted. And I would, if I had a little more time, uh, welcome everybody else who's come. I do see you there doing things. And if you're doing weird things, your video is off. I get that too. That's all fine. Okay. And afterwards, because this is going to be a fairly short event, um, I, for all of the events, I always stick around. Uh, if, you, if you or whether you're in the audience or a teller have an, uh, another story you want to share, great time to do it. If you have a question for a storyteller or anybody, great time to do it. We might have a couple of activities, but obviously you want to bow out, you bow out. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick the first name. I'm, I first of all, I, I love this format of the 99. Yeah. It's so fun. It's fabulous. By the way, just one last reminder here. When I say 99, what I mean is 99 and not more than 99. Mm -mm. only because it really hurts me when someone tells a great story and it's 107 seconds. Yeah. Uh, right, Kurt. And by all means, everybody should be uh, 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 looking in the comments. That's a good place to communicate with others. You can send a private chat or a chat to everyone. I'm going to assume you know how Zoom works a little bit, but real quick, top right for most, if not all of you should be something on my computer, it's a new Zoom software. So it might've been updated. It says either view or gallery or speaker. So you could play with that to see if you wanna see everybody or one person. I think, and, I, and t tell me if I'm wrong here, if you're on gallery and I spotlight the speaker, would that mean that it's spotlighted and it's the speaker or no? Yeah, it does. Does it? Yep. I'm gonna do that because I think it ensures that if somebody makes a sound, um, they don't get interrupted. Mm -hmm. Last call for Sean Jones or Anthony Morelli. Anthony Morelli or Sean Jones, are you here? You signed up to tell a story? Okay. I believe Anthony just bowed out on uh, oh, yeah. the Facebook. Okay. A couple of people bowed out. All right. Our first teller. And just mm -hmm. also, I'm going to do it right now, but I, no one, I, I can be bought. I might as well just say that right now. Oh. There's a pr everything has a price. No. Everything has a price. Just stop and it. Or me, probably not. Our first storyteller this evening undoubtedly is going to wow us from Toronto. Her name is Erin. I know. I know. And I <laughs> spotlight you, Erin. Take your time. And whenever you are ready, we're ready. Okay, can everyone hear me before I start? 
Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to start. So a thing you need to know about me is I am half Catholic. Now I know what you're saying. Catholicism is not an ethnicity. You cannot be half Catholic. However, my family is so filled with priests and nuns on my dad's side, I am. When I was three years old, we went to my grandmother's house and she was the kind of Catholic that had one of those giant crucifix with this scary bleeding Jesus, very carry. And I went to go like get a glass of water and I slipped on her beautifully waxed floor and she came running out and I looked right in her eyes and I screamed, Grandma, Grandma, the mean man made me fall to my very religious Catholic grandmother. And that's something I think about every single day. It is my first memory. And the fact that I think of it every single day means that I am half Catholic. Thank you. Boom. Erin is starting off this evening strong and does something that you don't see very often. She went, she was at like in the 60s. Yeah, yeah. Efficient. If you got the story in that time, that's all you need. Well done. Thank you for going first. I know it's not the ideal spot, but you represented beautifully. I think you're the only representative from a, uh, another country. I don't think there's anyone here who is physically located on another country, in another country. If you are, by the way, please unmute yourselves and say hello. They get like a special. She's in Toronto, Canada. Hmm, cool. All right. Yeah. Great job. I got a lot of shit last time because they said I talked too much. A couple people. I'm aware. I'm adjusting. I'll be better about it. Our second storyteller this evening. <laughs> There's only two people. And, why, why change, Sean? And you'll notice they're why not change? here this evening. Well, By see. the way, mm. I don't want you to think that I'm playing around here. And I, I thought about writing to you and saying that to you, Sean. So. Oh, oh, so that's three. And how do we block Elena Beth? Here we go. Remove. All right. Everybody's muted. Our second storyteller this evening from Philly. He's a librarian. He's got a fantastic beard. Please welcome Matt. Hello there. How are we doing today? Don't answer that. You can't talk. Um, so you can hit mash go at any time. So I am minding my own damn business. I'm brushing my teeth. I see something right in the, my peripheral vision here. And I look over and I see nothing. All right. It's just a flicker of the light. Don't worry about it. I go back to what I was doing. Now, nah, and I see it again. And I look, and there's nothing there. And I start breathing a little bit heavy. I'm just like, all right, all right, this is it. This is it. I've, I've been away from humans for too long. I'm, I'm, I'm losing it. I'm, I'm unraveling. It's, it, it starts subtly. And then soon, I will collapse into the void. My hopes and my dreams all a blurred vision against this poorly painted wall. My time and lucidity was good, but it must come to an end. And then I see it again. And I'm like, back foul demon, you will not strip me of my willpower. Oh, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's just the biggest fucking centipede I've ever seen in my life. It's good. It's fine. It's good. I am, I am totally fine. I am completely fine, totally raveled. It's good. Thank you. Boom. Thank you, Matt. Good job, ma'am. I think. What was the time on that? 78. Both coming in Boom. under time, which, hey, if we're choosing between being under and over, that's a pretty clear choice, right? Mm -hmm. Matt, you're the only person in f from I hear this evening, at least of the tellers, in Philadelphia. You are representing an entire city. You are representing a city whose football team almost came back against the Baltimore Ravens today. You may not be a football fan, but for those of you that are, 
I would have said something about Erin and her Toronto Argonauts, but no one really pays attention that much to them. So we won't go into that whole football world. I want to be inclusive. And Elena, I know what you're thinking right now. Sean, you're doing it again. I know. I see. I'm good. Next teller. Here we go. Remember, after the sixth teller, Mary's going to give you a summary of the stories. And then you're going to vote for your top two. And there's 26 people in total here. So Mary could have up to 24. And that's two names you get to put in there. Mm -hmm. And make sure you put in two. Why not, right? Right. Sometimes people just put in one. I don't understand. They get two votes and they only use one of them. I know. Right? Right. 100%. Our next third storyteller this evening is representing, not the only one, Massachusetts, my podcast partner, a good man, a slightly broken man. <laughs> let, us let us welcome Kurt Mully. Hey, everybody. Help me put the pieces back together. Okay, here I go. I'm starting now. So this is 20 years ago when I first met Amy, and she wants me to meet her sister, Polly, and Polly's husband, Brad. So we go over there, and I stay in the driveway talking to Brad at the grill. And after a minute or two, I realize that this guy, Brad, maybe he doesn't really want to talk. But we make it through dinner and then we're in the living room, all four of us together. And if there's one thing I can say about this couple, Polly and Brad, they've got good kids. The youngest is a baby asleep in the back room, but the four-year-old, Rory, with the vocabulary and the earnestness, he comes up and I'm talking to his dad and Rory, I mean, he, he's still a kid and he's digging his hands in his pants when his comes out and his finger is outstretched, I can't help but notice it's glistening. And when he stretches his out to touch his dad's bare leg because his dad's wearing shorts, everybody stops. And he does it because he's a kid. He touches his dad's leg. And Polly snaps him up and takes him in the back room. And because the baby's mic'd up, you can hear everything here in the living room. And she says, why did you do that? And you need to wash your hands with hot water and soap. And when Rory comes out of the bathroom with dry hands and he says, I'm sorry, everybody. I, but I, you know, sometimes, sometimes I make mistakes. And Amy and I get in the car and we drive back to my place in the city and we're laughing now. And I'm thinking, Polly and Brad's place, I could probably do that again. Thank you. Bada boom. I will not tell the time unless you want to, and then I can tell you. It's up to you all. That does mean if you've gone over, Everybody's going to know. Good job, Kurt. Uh, let's move on. Let us move on. We're moving on. Moving on up. Who knows the theme song to what? Yeah. Millennials don't know the answer to that question unless they watch it on reruns. Moving on up to the east side. Mm -hmm. Deluxe apartment. And the sky high high. Our next storyteller. Fourth of six in round one. Live from my area, my hood, my neighborhood, my neck of the woods, welcome Sharon Eisner. Sharon, let me spotlight you, and then whenever you are ready, take it away. So I'm looking at a painting of Elvis on velvet with one tear checking down his cheek. I'm seven, I'm in Tijuana, Mexico. And I'm thinking, what does Elvis have to cry about? Dude's got everything going for him, really. Now in the store, my aunt, my mom, my cousins were all shopping for things, ceramic things. My dad has gone with my sister to find a bathroom. And I see outside the store, I see Senorita dolls with flouncy, trouncy red dresses and seniors with striped ponchos. And I walk out and I hear one dollar, one dollar, one dollar. And they are selling these dolls and I want one. I turn back to the store to tell my mom that I would like a doll and I do not see my mom. I do not see the store. I see a lot of stores. I see no crying Elvis. And suddenly I am aware that I am lost in Mexico. 
and I have a brief glimpse of the rest of my life where my face is on a milk carton and I am living in a country where I do not understand a word. And I start crying and a woman in a flouncy, trouncy colored dress picks me up. She puts me on her table and I think she is going to sell me for one dollar, one dollar, one dollar. And I cry and suddenly I feel arms around me and I smell leather and pipe smoke and it is my father and I am found. And suddenly I know why Elvis is crying. Maybe he was not found. Boom. Great job, Sharon. Wait, did you say you're going to tell us time or not? Only if you want to. I'd like to know my time. Your time. I'm always going to be rounding down just to hook you all up. Uh, 97 seconds. Thank you. That's how you do it. <laughs> North Carolina is representing here this evening. Good job. Sounds like some trauma. Okay. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Crying Elvis, that would be traumatic. Two more storytellers in this first part, then you're gonna vote, we'll chat a little bit. I'll do a couple of like soft plugs of stuff, you know, a little promotion. It's not really my forte as many of you know, but uh, you know, and then we'll get into the second part. Here hey, we go. Our, what? People wanna know, they're here. Yeah, they're yeah. Here. Mary, you should plug some stuff too. You got some shit going on, right? Uh, I, well, not storytelling stuff, but sure. So what? Yeah. I'll let y'all know. That's the least we can offer you, right? Oh, listen, no, all this this stuff. Ex the experience is enough with everyone here. Are you kidding? Oh, God. My love, please. Our next storyteller, round one, fifth of six, live from Tucson, Arizona. She may be the only storyteller here in the entire southwestern part of this United States. Her name is Mary Jo Pollock. I don't know what her sign is, but I expect magic from her. Mary Jo, where are you? Let me spotlight you. There you are, one sec. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Yeah. And whenever you're ready, take your time. I will start. Taurus, by the way. Okay, thank you. Fuck you very much. That's what's going through my mind as I stand in the office of the Dean of Fine Arts at El Camino College. I, it's 1991 and I had just returned to college after more than a 20 year hiatus. And I, shortly after my father, shortly after I started my father's cancer returned and he was in San Diego area and I was in the LA area and I'm driving down there three and four times a week. I'm trying to keep up with two classes and my full-time real estate career and I'm slipping behind seriously in one of my classes. I asked the instructor for an extension. I tell him my father had cancer and he just died. And he said, in order to get the extension, I need to get permission from the Dean of Fine Arts. I explain to him what's going on. And he tells me, you need to show me a copy of the death certificate. The logistics and bureaucracy made it impossible for me to get it in the proper time frame, And I am seething, I'm furious, but I say, okay, and walk out of his office. And I figure I'll just do less than perfect work and get a lower grade. Fuck you very much. Bam. An entire section of the United States is riding on you. <laughs> no long, pressure. Sean? What? How long? What was my time? 89 seconds. Okay. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> now, just, just as a reminder, you know, you can tell longer stories. You don't, aren't really limited to one minute and 39 seconds. This is a particular format that we're using that forces us in essence, to get to the true bare bones of the story. So it is an interesting practice or- It is, it you is. Know? You, you know, your words are important, so you got to use them correctly. I don't usually follow that well. That, well, why? You always break I just I have issues. I'm good at other things though. Our final storyteller 
of this round. And then remember, Mary's going to tell everybody a little blurb about the story. You're going to send Mary the Alba, only Mary, two names, your top two. Here we go. Final storyteller, round one. This is her second slam with us. I think, I actually don't know where she is. She's very, very kind. Let me find her and spotlight her. There she is on the bottom. You can unmute yourself, Anu. I'm in Iowa City. Oh, right. Remember? I do We have two people from Iowa City and you and good Corey. times. Yes. But tonight, it's only you. It's just me. I'm representing so, Iowa City, right. India, all kinds of places I'm representing. Right. Yep. All right. My time starts now. Um, my husband and I love to travel and we love animals. So in 2008, we adopted a little puppy. And um, when Christmas came around, we didn't want to leave the puppy in a border or alone and decided to take the puppy with us on vacation. So we had to decide where we were going to go on vacation with this puppy. We decided to take a road trip to Utah and volunteer at an animal sanctuary, because why not, um, so we could spend time with our puppy. And on our drive there, we talked about all the reasons why we didn't want to come back with another animal. Of course, that didn't work. We came home with another dog. Um, Gigi was a um, Hurricane Katrina rescue, and she was an old soul. But she had a lot of fears. And she came by them honestly. She was at, in Hurricane Katrina. I spent a lot of time awake with her during storms. Every time there was a storm, I had to be up at night. If I had stock in drywall, I would be rich. She would dig holes in our wall every time she was scared. Three years later, we adopted our son and he had his own version of trauma. But they had an immediate bond. My son would reach out to her for comfort before he came to me. She knew instinctively when he was upset or sad and went to him even before I knew he was upset or sad. So Gigi passed away last year. And even I gladly am happy to stay up so many nights with my Katrina rescue, knowing that she helped my son sleep better. Boom. For those of you that don't know, sometimes that's how we end things here with a boom. Great boom. job, Anu. Again, boom. I remember your story from last time. It resonated and uh, well done. Thank you, thank you. Higher Midwestern state. Right, just right. like the caucuses. Exactly. This Which we could, that's a whole other, I'd like to talk to you about that after we're done here this evening and how that all came to be, if you know, because it's really weird and interesting. There are several people here who are representing either in a, a state a region, or in one person's case, an entire country. Country. And you're right. doing it. With I'm just race. doing the caucuses. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, we must. I, I just commend you for representing with such grace and beauty and style. Well, thank you so much. I, I commend everybody for being under time, which means means everybody is in the running here. You right. will not find out, by the way, until we are totally done. Okay. So now Mary's going to share with you a little blurb about our six storytellers and mm -hmm. you'll have a few minutes and I want to rush you send a private chat this is super important and please uh unmute yourself and ask me or tell me if you don't know what that means we love you either way we're not judging you under the chat you'll see a way to send something just to Mary d apostrophe alba all mm -hmm. right Mary Summary, please. All right. So Erin in Toronto made sure that she told her very Catholic grandmother about the mean man on the cross that made her fall when she was three years old. Matt was casting out a demon centipede. Maybe uh, quarantine got too much for him. Kurt had met uh, Amy's family, including Rory, who sometimes made mistakes, um, but was sweet as ever. Sharon uh, with a velvet Elvis in, New Mex in Mexico getting lost, um, but was found luckily for her. Uh, MJ in Tucson, fuck you very much with a family tragedy asking for an extension, still rocked her class anyway. And Anu, who had the sweet story about the puppy that she brought home from Utah and her son bonding with them. Thank you very much, Mary. Yes. Remember, the six storytellers who told, you may vote. We want to include you because I think it's important. Always working on inclusivity. So let's give it a few, right. let's, so it's 7.32. We'll start up again in round two at 7.35. So maybe you need to think about it, get a beer. So just to clarify, we vote for two of the six. Correct. Right. So you're gonna send Mary. 
Okay. Two names. And it's probably easy for if you send the two names in the same message. Yeah, that would not help. Two different messages. So just write Bobby and Ronnie and send it. If you write Bobby and Ronnie, that won't make much sense because they didn't tell a story, but you know what I mean. You've got a couple minutes. I will not distract you by blabbing. There's nothing wrong with a little downtime. It just makes for a really bad Facebook Live. Oh, people will be all right. They'll go get a drink. There's two people watching the live. They're going to be fine. Yeah, they'll be okay. We appreciate them watching. If you can unmute yourself, if you have a burning desire to share something with us, and we send uh, we send the vote to. If you go to the chat and you'll see a little blue thing and you hit two and under there, you should be able to find Mary de Alba. It says co-host next to her name. Okay. And I send it to her. I'll give it a try. And listen, folks, if you're voting for yourself, just put your name and don't put yourself. Then I got to look back up and figure out who you are. So. It's cool to vote for yourself, but if you can put your name in, that would help me a lot. Thank you for that. Right. So if Kurt's ver voting for Kurt, you should also yeah. write Kurt. You should write Kurt. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. 100% Aaron. Yeah. Let's wait. Do you want to wait until um, after? Either way, you could do it now while people are mulling about for the next couple minutes and or after. Um, um, if, you don't, if you don't mind, I, I will yeah. mention it now. Uh, I'm going to put a link to it in the chat. I have a show on Thursday that I'm really, really excited about Wait. called Met Through Twitter. Um, every time I do a show, there'll be at least one person I only know from online. The stories are really, really excellent. And there's a bunch of free tickets. So please, I know it's tough times. Just get yourself a free ticket. Get one for your friend. Uh, I'd love to see you there. It's going to be an amazing show. And I'm so excited. Make sure, Erin, that you put to everyone and doesn't go to Mary or me. Um, some people can unmute themselves and do a little uh, a, a plug of some kind, and then you'll also have time afterwards. So unmute if you've got some. Kurt Mullen. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Um, Saturday, uh, October 24th, so next Saturday, um, I'm doing uh, Better Said Than Done, and the theme is uh, the American dream. And uh, it's, I think it's pay what you can, and I'll put the, uh, the link in the chat. I'm psyched awesome. for it, too. Great. And remember, uh, once the Zoom ends, and I'm not going to rush off, but once it ends, you won't have that link. So if you want to follow up with that, just copy it and do something with it so you can save it. I do actually get the, uh, the chat recorded. So worst case, you can reach out to me. But I'm, when I'm not on Zoom, I am really cranky. And so you best do it now. Is there anybody else? And you'll have time afterwards as well. And by the way, this also goes for our audience members as a special thanks for being here and listening and taking part. By all means, hop on, do a little plug. Um, ideally, it's around storytelling. If a great massage parlor opened up in your neighborhood, probably not important enough to share, probably. That's it, Aaron and storyteller Kurt and storyteller Aaron, okay. Ar Elena, I know, I know. I know what you're thinking. Well, I have several things, but they come up next month, so I'll just talk this about them great. later. That's cool. Next, my, my, my only plug for this moment is next week, next Sunday evening, we have our monthly seven by seven. In the last few months, I've been doing it focused on the mental health struggle. They've been going really well. Solid tellers, important stories. Uh, around the mental health struggles. So that's next Sunday at the exact end. Most of my events are on Sunday evenings. Nice. Cool. All right. So Mary, we have 25 potential uh, people sending you. Do you have enough? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I sent you if you check out the chat. Okay. Ooh. The message. Yeah. yeah. I did. I did. I am efficient. Perfect. Awesome. We're going to move on. Yeah. We're moving on. Nobody's going to tell me this went too long this time. I'm sorry. That You could say other things, but not that. No. Nope. We only have five, which means there's two spots for the final five. Now, I should tell you, the Grand Slam, some of you don't know about this because you sort of found out about this late in the game. This is the fourth time we've done something like this. So if this is the first time for you, now you know about it and moving forward, you can come on other ones. 
Um, we'll have 18 total tellers in the Grand Slam, two rounds of nine. Everybody there will has, has advanced to second rounds in prior slams. What that means is at this moment, I have 15 tellers and they've all confirmed that they're available, which was astounding. Yes. So I have three spots and I'm going to have one alternate because chances are someone's going to flake. All right. That's the best I can do. Something comes up, you know, things happen. We understand. Who is unmuted? This is amazing. We're listening to the Tampa Bay Green Bay game, but who is it? I really want to know who's unmuted themselves. Otherwise, this is creepy. Identify yourself. No one's in trouble. Okay. <laughs> is this a Zoom bomb? Uh, Am I getting bombed? I don't think I know. The only unmuted people are Sean and Mary. According yeah, it's not, to and it's not me, my love. So I don't know if you're on a website. Go ahead, Sean, mute that yourself. is the most embarrassing thing that's happened to me throughout all these hosting and producing events things. It was me. So you're watching the game while you're listening no, to no, us? No, of course not. No, no, no. I had ESPN on. I don't even know why I have to justify myself. No, I had ESPN on before and I was checking out the score, but for some, it, I don't know why it went like live with volume. Oh. That's bizarre. Anyway, let's, come on, I digress. Tampa Bay is winning by a lot, by the way, if you care. Okay. Okay. Aaron Rodgers is really not all that. But hey, we got, a, we got our next teller. Come on. Your boy Brady's doing wonders tonight. Okay, here we go. It's not my boyfriend anymore. I broke up with him. Mm -hmm. Teller number one. I don't know how he got over that. Teller number <laughs> one, round two. In Houston, I think she's representing the entire Lone Star State. Her name is Ruth. Let me spotlight you. All right. Can you make LSD? One of the cool long-haired guys said, hanging out in the suite and the co-op. I was walking in with my ginormous organic chemistry textbook. Oh, wow, they're talking to me? Uh, yeah, I think I can. And I started sketching and I was really enjoying hanging out with my new friends. And we were getting on famously until I said, I don't think I can get what I need to start this project. So they're like, yeah, and they kind of turned back to their prior conversation and that didn't include me. So I came up with plan B and said, wait, I think I can make mescaline. And then the party was like back on and we had these plans and we were gonna make it in the bathtub because what could possibly go wrong making a large batch of absorbable hallucinogens in a communal college bathroom? And then my boyfriend came in and he was like, hey, what's going on? And I said, we're gonna make mescaline in the bathtub. And he said, come here. And he told me how I wasn't gonna to go to medical school cause I was gonna to go to prison. And so I ended up going to medical school and marrying him, but I could have made mescaline in the bathtub. Boom. She's learned, boom. Great oh. job, Ruth. The weight of an entire state, you did well. Where are you by the way? It's so mysterious. <laughs> I just need to put the light on. Ah, see, let's leave wow. it dark. That got oh, no. more mysterious now. Wow. Leave it okay. dark. Leave it dark. Leave it dark. I, I, need, I need an AV person. It's all good. We're all figuring this stuff out. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Very good job. Our second teller moving right along. Only four names left. Crazy. Here we go. I'm trying to create some suspense here, but I just don't know how to do that. Uh, from, I believe, Chicago, good man, blue hair. His name is Dan. Let me find you, and then you'll unmute yourself. Where are you, Dan Squander? There you are. Are you unmuted? You are good, sir. So I 
I'm on the floor, I'm like 16, I'm in the kitchen and I get up off the linoleum and I'm so upset because I've just failed uh, to kill myself. I drop the knife and I feel like such a fucking coward. And the first thing that I see is this glass cookie jar. And it brings back all these memories about all the things I love about childhood. And I'm just enraged and I just run up to it and smash. And it's crashed all around my fist, but I'm unscathed until I relax. And then microscopic little cuts break out and I just weep blood. And for 20 years, that's the most impotent I have ever felt. He just went dark. He did. That was, a, the production value on that surpassed anything I've ever seen on Zoom. Using the camera in the way you did, I'm not showing favorites, just to be clear. Good job, man. Uh, happens to be a topic of which I'm very connected to. So thank you for sharing that. Good job. Boom. Amazing stories. They're all amazing. Good stories. We knew this was gonna be competitive. It is. We knew we would get some strong stories, talented tellers. We always do. We do. They always bring it. They're always all bring it. Check the chat for those of you. Some people are, are writing things. I cannot, I don't have the time, the moment to share with you, but people are sharing things with you, the tellers. So it's probably worth checking out because I know that we're all home and many of us are alone and we're in front of a computer. It's like, what the fuck is this? Ready? So our, uh, we only have three more. Then we're going to do the same thing again. Mm -hmm. Mary's going to summarize. You're going to vote. I'll tell you the names. Uh, and then we'll bring it in. We'll bring it in. Here we go. Our third storyteller in round two. I don't know where this man is, and I hope I pronounced your name correctly, sir. Let me spotlight you, Ajay. There you are, sir. Take your time. Unmute yourself. You're good. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sir. 21st January, 2013. I received the official invite from Obama, Obama White House to attend the presidential ball. The decision was easy. I declined because I was busy. The thing is I had promised my father in India the same week I would accompany him to visit Rashtrapati Bhavan, which is India's White House. That decision was easy but there is another decision I have struggled with for the last 20 years, whether to become a US citizen. Of course, US allows dual citizenship, but as per Indian law, I would have to give up my Indian citizenship and that is the part I struggle with. My father was a freedom fighter and fought against British. He left home to join Gandhiji's non-violence movement. He was tortured and spend time in jail. So people like me will be free citizens of India. Having such a sacrifice in the family, I just didn't want to give up my Indian citizenship. My father actually encouraged me to be a US citizen. He said, I should be a good citizen wherever I go, but I still could not decide. But during this current administration, I realized I must make my voice heard. So I become a US citizen last week. My father will be very proud. And the best part, because I'm voting for the first time, I feel I'm 18 years old again. Thank you. Great job, Ajay. Hey, Jack, I would love to know how long I took. 99. Damn, good job. Where are you, by the way? Uh, I'm in Lexington, Massachusetts. Oh, Matt, what is going on? I, I just That's where is the, another revolution started. Massachusetts has got something in the water. Don't know what it is. 
just getting in under time is Ajay in Massachusetts. And uh, for the record, how do I pronounce your name, sir? Sorry. It's Ajay. I think you are almost there. I am almost there. Okay. Not bad for a white dude. Ajay, thank you. Final two. Here we go. You know who you are. You're waiting. You've been patient. We all appreciate that. Second to last teller of the evening. I think she's also in Massachusetts. Yes. yes. Make sure you've uh, muted yourself if your name isn't Cora. Cora, let me spotlight you and uh, take it away whenever you're ready. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm going to start my own timer because I want to just be conscious. All right. And go. I'm nine. My little sister Annie is four and she's lost. She's been lost for a couple hours um, because one minute she was in the driveway riding her Hot Wheels and the next minute she wasn't. So now the whole neighborhood is outside calling Annie, Annie, and my dad is out driving around looking for her um, because my parents are divorced and we're at his house for the weekend. So my dad comes back without my sister and he says, oh my God, I think I have to call the police. And immediately all I can think is like how upset my mother is gonna be when she finds out about this because like if I lose a sweater, I get in trouble and my dad's lost like an entire human being. So my dad calls the police and it turns out that they'd already found my sister in a cemetery across a busy road next to our subdivision. And they'd taken her to a place called Child Haven, which when I asked my mother, she tells me is like an orphanage. So my dad takes me back to my mom's house so he can go daddy warbucks my sister out of Child Haven. And I'm just like waiting in the family room for him to come back anticipating this explosive argument between my parents. But then suddenly my dad is there with Annie in his arms and my mom just says, Bill. And my dad says, yeah, Lynn, I know. And that was it. Thank you. Boom. Boom. Oh, uh, the timer. <laughs> nice job. I love it. Good job. Um, yes, when we've not met before. So I can't tell you not only how much I appreciate your story, but you playing by these tacit rules of saying boom when your story's done. You are a quick learner. I appreciate that. It makes me feel important. Thank you very much. I do, not need, I do not need to draw the last name out of my hat from Peru. You know who you are. You are our final storyteller live from Evanston, home of Northwestern, a very, very mediocre basketball and football program. No judgments. Please welcome James Peterson. Nineteen seventies. I read a column by a, a famous sex bisexual columnist in New York. He says that being bisexual, he can walk into a party of a hundred people and find ninety nine potential sex partners. Not me. I go to that party. I will find a woman on the edge of a set nervous breakdown and be sexually attracted to her. Complicated. Something has to give. I read about a researcher who has invented something called the penile plethysmograph. I love how that rolls off the tongue. Essentially, it's a small blood pressure cuff that when attached to an erection can measure minute changes in arousal. It's a genital lie detector. I go to my boss, an editor, and I say, I wanna do this. And he looks at me and said, why? I said, Think of the money I could save if I actually knew what I was looking for. And he said, you're 25. This is why God invented your 20s, to make mistakes. But no, I find the plethysmograph. I make a photo array of past girlfriends, crushes, uh, movie stars, spread it out, put the machine on my erection, and oh my God, I'm turned on by the machine. How do you start this thing? Boom. What a way to end it, Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, um, Lord. Okay, so before Mary gives us the uh, summary of our five storytellers, everybody was uh, is eligible. No one was DQ'd 99 or under, which makes every single storyteller this evening fair game. That's all right. Uh, Mary, when you're ready, would you share a summary or a blurb of our five storytellers? I can, I can. So Ruth decided to go to medical school instead of making mescaline in the community bathtub at college. Dan told the story of his attempt to die by suicide at 16. AJ, AJ talked about um, becoming a US citizen and voting for the first time in this election and the struggle between sticking with his Indian citizenship or becoming solely a US citizen. Cora talked about her little sister Annie getting found in the cemetery. That's a place I would go. And James talked about his genital lie detector. Yes, same, same deal as last time. Everybody but me and Mary, send Mary two names. If you're sending your own name, which I would 100% do, totally. just put your actual name and the second name. Please, thank do it you. in the same message only to Mary. I will stop talking. I will, I will remove the spotlight from James. I keep doing that. And if anybody wants to unmute themselves while Mary counts the votes and uh, share something related to storytelling and a great fucking posting. show. Wow. Both these, both these sides, man. Both these, I wouldn't right. want to be on either of these. I'm First telling round you, or I second round. 18 people in this grand slam in two weeks and- It's going to be fire. There could easily be 18 others that are great. It's tricky. Yeah. It's going to be a really good show. So uh, great job. Anybody, anybody have anything to plug? Whether you're in a show, producing a show, anything else, you can unmute yourselves, share it with us. If you love dumb garbage like that stupid centipede story, you'll enjoy my blog at mattstalltales.com. <laughs> nice. Holy cow, what just happened? Thanks, Matt. I, um, I have this idea that I've been ruminating in my mind for a while. Uh, is this, are you sure this is public, Mary Jo? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. People can rip me off, I don't care. No, no, okay. <clears throat> and I've had this idea, and if anybody here qualifies, and I, it's something I would wanna do next year because I'm too busy this year. What is it? Is to do a story, a story group, a group of women scientists of various ages. And I would love to see that done. And I would love to see it in a format that can be sent to schools. Ah, I like that. About women Young women to see, to be interested in STEM more than they are now. And just, cause I know several women in Tucson that teach at the U of A, they teach chemistry, geology, they have PhDs in science. And um, so I have a few, but it's just like an idea I have. And if anybody ha thinks it's a good idea and you want to work with me on it for something that maybe would be in four to six months from now, um, friend me on Facebook, Mary Jo Pollock. She's friendable. I'm friendable. Thanks, Mary Jo. Anybody else? I can see. I don't even have to ask Mary that she's still working. I can see we have that thing going. We've been doing this. It's not our first rodeo, people. No, no. Um, anybody else? People are putting in the chat some information to the tellers and plugging. And by the way, if you're in the audience, thank you so much for being here. Um, and you can also plug something. Why not? You're part of the fam, kind of. Unmute yourself. Let us see you if you want. Tough crowd. Yeah, well, folks want to see my stories from the stage. It's on my website, marydalva.com. I've seen it. It's great. Thank you. So good. So good. Yeah. So, um, so there was someone it. in the audience earlier that had to sneak out a little bit uh, early, uh, but her name is Brune Smith, and she has an amazing story uh, show called Bodies of Stories. Okay. So I want to plug that one okay. because it is a fantastic online show. Did she come here to support you? She did. Did you Isn't feel that nice? supported? Yeah. Did you feel supported? I did. Because that's what matters most, really. Yeah. But it's also like, I'm going to be honest, and this is going to sound cheesy, but that's who I am. Uh, this is also a very supportive community. So, yay. 
All right. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. I've got, I've got the four. Now remember, three are in for the November 1st. You got to let me know you're available. Awkward if it's not. Let me know before you leave this call, if you can. I know something could come up. And then the best I could do is have that, that, that 19th spot as you're like on hold. Either way, you'll get to tell your story that night. But in case any of them bail out, flake out, get sick or anything like that, we'll work it out. All right. Yes. Then if you want to hang out, it's not even eight o'clock. I have gotten better at this shit. I can keep talking for another minute and a half and still be in time under eight. Dan, I could keep blabbing and blabbing away from my home in North Carolina. I want to hear you tell a story, Sean. Well, thank you for making it so awkward now for me, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I can. No, you're good at it. No, you're good. Uh, Sherry will be telling a story with us in some form very soon. And if you want to stick around after, uh, if you don't, legitimately, if you have any questions about the mental health show, I also am doing uh, something relatively new, which is more of like a, a mental health related um, open mic. Uh, so that might be more up your alley. And we do something that a lot of people here are involved in called Story Flash, which is just, it overlaps a lot with what we're doing tonight. It's just sort of quick, impromptu, short stories. It's good to work your muscles and it's fun. So okay. hang out. Questions about no, that? If anybody it's not has fun. It's the most fun you can have in a few minutes. It's so much fun. It's just fun. It's fun, 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 fun. <laughs> in a few minutes with clothes on. I got so. I want to um, chime into that also. It's like improv meets storytelling, and it's very relaxed. And it it is. Um, I don't want to use the word fun, but that's what it is. <laughs> A lot of people like that word tonight. And uh, so for Julie and Mary Jo and Sharon, I have your Venmo uh, and I will be getting you out a reasonable number <laughs> to thank you for your kind words. I appreciate that. It is fun. It is fun. It is really fun. All right. So the uh, top three, and then I'll say the fourth one, the person with the absolute most votes this evening who will be assuming this person, notice how I didn't say he or she, uh, is available. Number one, from Massachusetts, I think, Ajay. Yes. Now, thank, thank you, you. really appreciate that. And thank yes, you so Ajay, much. Great, great story. And uh, we'll, we'll chat in a second. I'll make sure that everyone's available. Uh, because if you're not, then I'll make sure someone else gets in. Number two, also going to the Grand Slam, assuming he or she is available, is Sharon Eisner. Nice. Yeah. Great job, Sharon. I'm available. You're, and she's already saying she's available, great. Our third person in the Grand Slam, I, oh, oh, yo, I can't say the state because she's the only one there, Anu. Great job, y'all. And our, I, for lack of a better word, our alternate, is that the right word? Alternate? Yes. Yes. Backup? Also new to this sphere or ecosystem, so to speak, Cora. Nice. Good job, Cora. Now, if you just didn't win and you want to vent a little bit, now's the time. Steal their thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in and get upset. It's fine. This is how we roll. For real, for real everybody, this is a really good job of 99 second stories. And uh, I wasn't joking when I say I, there are so many storytellers that have told stories like this that didn't move on that easily could have. It's just tight and close. So uh, feel free. Let me know, by the way, Sharon, Cora, Anu, Ajay, if you're not available, let me know before you get off this call or just message me soon. I'll make myself available. Cool. So it'll be a similar format, similarly competitive. And uh, <laughs> much more competitive. No, no, no. And some of the people who are there are also here with us lurking, doing their homework, 
watching and listening for your style <laughs> and trying to best figure out the way in which they will crush you. That's the way it is. That's just no, it is not. No, it's not. Julie's <laughs> upset now. Julie's not. <laughs> Julie's right. a competitor. Hi, Julie. Uh, I'm not. I'm not that kind of competitor. <laughs> I, yeah. I compete against myself. Right. <laughs> Wait, Julie so tells so really good stories. That's Julie's uh, superpower. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. So I feel like I have beginner's there. luck and it'll run out by the next time. So I'm oh, okay. and that that is not that you need to manifest uh, a success on you. More beginner's luck. <laughs> so some people like it when there's like, all right, well, we've officially ended it. So like in some ways we're officially saying that part of the event is over. We've had the storytellers tell and we had some winners and everyone really legitimately did a great job. Um, so it's, so if you want to go, of course you go, you can leave at any time and I'm going to stick around. So if you want to stick around, uh, if storytellers want to stick around, sometimes uh, if you're open to it, people have questions about the story itself. So if you're open, you don't have to answer that. Sometimes it's a bit personal, which is cool. Um, and let us, let us just chat. 